Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. But I learned so much from the experience. One, I learned I could bear abject humiliation and survive it. And I learned about a strength that I had and I was okay. I also learned a lot about keeping my word and responsibility. And the most important thing I learned is not to fake it if I don't know something, just to to cop to it. Hi, it's Joseph. And thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. In this episode, I tell the story of the most embarrassing moment of my teenage years and how I survived to learn from the experience. And if that isn't reason enough to keep listening, we'll explore the power of turning toward discomfort and being strong enough to undergo and overcome shame. What if the feeling of shame was actually a reason to engage in something, not avoid it? What if subjecting yourself to embarrassment when there's good reason for it is actually one of the most powerful ways to learn. Keep listening to find out more. And I'm very excited to announce the release of my ebook, Cut the Bullshit, Solve Your Problems by Getting Real. It's full of direct, practical advice related to getting employees engaged, hiring right the first time, how to create a culture of radical responsibility, and a whole lot more. For a limited time, I'm giving this ebook away for nothing. So if you've got some spare nothing, please go to clearandopen.com slash CTB to download it. That's CTB standing for Cut the Bullshit. It's a free ebook to reward and support my loyal listeners. Thanks so much for being one. Okay, let's dive into today's podcast. So ask yourself what weaknesses you're not turning toward. And Sam says, Harvard grads get hired, others don't. The value is never in practicality outside of hiring. In one way, yes, but more and more employers are coming out. There was an article in in Google, came out a year or two ago, where they were talking about how they don't look at people's education anymore. And that's really where the pivot is going to happen, when employers start not paying attention. I think you're exactly right. That's, That's part of where the value is. That's the big myth, is that people with degrees... And there seems to be a trend that way, that people with degrees. What, what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. It means you learned how to play the game called school. All right, that's something. It doesn't mean you can critically think. I went to one of these fancy schools. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I graduated, I looked around and went, whoa. Some of them were there just because they were really great at a sport. So it doesn't mean anything. It was actually the idea of one of you, perhaps, that that person will speak up and, and bring that idea. Sam says, critical thinking isn't what pays the bills. I disagree. But let me say one more thing. Uh, critical thinking does pay the bills because critical thinking is the tool you can use to earn money. It's the single most valuable skill an employee has. Go ahead, Hannah. So yeah, I slacked Joseph the other day because something came to my mind. I know the initial thought of it kind of made me cringe and it made me super uncomfortable. And then you did what with that discomfort? Um, So I brought that to you and asked if we could do that. So I, I, I did it. Hold on a second. Hold on. You had an idea that made you uncomfortable and then that, that told you what? Um, that I needed to act on it because that's it. That's emotional yeah. maturity. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. Huh. That makes me really uncomfortable. Let's go more into that. Maybe it means I shouldn't do it. It's a bad idea. Maybe it means it's a good idea, but yeah. it got your attention. That's what I'm talking about. And it turned out it was a great idea, which was. So I was thinking that each week a different member of the webcast would host it um, with an idea or something that they want to bring. Maybe it's something you're struggling with that you would host the webcast and people could ask questions. I feel like it would be a good 
way to develop. That's why it's still scary to me, but I think it would be fun and a good opportunity for everybody. I agree. Thank you. And that's why I talked for the last 45 minutes about shame and turning toward weaknesses to set this up. Because now you don't have any good reason to say no to the idea, you say. Isn't Joseph kind of a bastard sometimes? <laughs> Takes away your resistance before it even comes up. That's my job. Or maybe it doesn't take it away, but gives you a meta frame. If, if I could take it away like that, that would be cool. So we got some time here. Anybody want to talk about something? And this was the idea behind, you know, bring a question. But I would love to work with people for, you know, maybe an entire time, maybe two people in an hour. Yeah, I was just going to ask everybody what they think about that and how, like, what was your initial reaction? Nice, Anna. Good question. And Hannah's asking you, not the person next to you. Especially the you who doesn't talk a lot. So <laughs> that's definitely not me. She wasn't asking me because I talk way too much. Um, I think it's a really great idea just because I want to say two days ago, I actually had to admit to Kristen to my own overwhelm after she was pointing it out to me. And I'm like, nah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then finally, I just had to break down and admit that she was 100% right. So I think it's a really great idea. High five, Victor. High five, Kristen. Well done. Other thoughts, comments? I think there's definitely a part of me that kind of, when, when I heard the suggestion, kind of so succumbed to the, the, I guess, the fear of the shame of not bringing something that would be well, I don't know about worthy of being discussed, but um, something that, uh, well, yeah, I guess that's it. Feeling like maybe there's the expectation, you know, that that, that we come with something that's that's um, maybe a little more high-minded and worthy of, of, of putting out there and, and using everybody's time to discuss that. So that was one of the, I think that was my initial reaction to it. It's, uh, it's daunting. I think it would probably be a really good thing for that reason. Yeah, it'll be a workout. <laughs> You know, my junior year in high school, uh, I took this class in German history that was infamous in high school because it was taught by this guy who used to be a law professor. And he was my first exposure to Socratic method. And the, the deal in the arrangement of the class, he said from the very beginning, is on most classes, I'm going to call on you. I'm going to call on someone at random. And we're going to have a conversation about the reading. This is commonly done in law school, where they'll pick one or two people in any hour and have a conversation with them. Well, you can imagine that that changes the way you do the reading, right? You get 50 pages of reading for the night, and the whole time you're thinking, well, Professor Lillian may be having a conversation with me about this tomorrow. I better pay attention, and you don't know. I wish I could describe to you the dread that... The first five minutes of that class, every class, like no one was ever late. Everybody's there kind of shoulders back rounded, hunched over, like to protect their vital organs. And and some, they've got the reading out. There's this eerie kind of stillness. And then he, he always, for some reason, stood out in the hall until the final bell rang. So everyone would be in the class and he's just standing out in the hall, amiable guy, not like an authoritarian, dude, just kind of goofy and very smart, kind of like a Woody Allen type. And then he would go in, put on his glasses, look down the attendance list because he kept track of who he last called on and would hit everybody, of course. And then one day he said, Mr. Shapiro. And then, of course, everyone in the room except for me completely relaxed. Like, oh, whew. And this was the first time he called on me. Who were the Teutonic Knights, he asked which was based on the reading before. Now I was a really good high school student. I was top five in my class most of the four years. But uh, after the swim practice I had the night before, my eyes were all chlorined out for some reason, and I'd fallen asleep, and I didn't finish the reading. Completely failed. So I was in trouble. But because I had a self-image of being a really good student, 
it didn't fit for me to just go, you know what, Mr. Lillian, I didn't do the reading. Because you got to do that once a semester. You got to just bail out. And that was okay. If that happened a second time, it would affect your grade. That would have been the integrity thing to do. But I was young and I didn't, didn't learn anything about integrity until my late 20s. So I said, they were a bunch of guys. This is a true story, exactly my words. And he goes, hold on, let me get this. He takes a piece of chalk and writes one period, a bunch of guys, and then writes Teutonic Knights at the top. I'm starting to sweat now. People are getting even more uncomfortable around me. There's like some shuffling. My mouth is getting dry. What else can you tell us about the Teutonic Knights, Mr. Shapiro? They got together. <laughs> I think I said. He writes, they got together too. He's like, what else? I'm just like paralyzed. He's like, you're third and eight, Mr. Shapiro. What do you want to do? And I, I'm just in frozen. People were like, punt, punt. And he's like, do you want to punt? I said, yeah, I'm going to punt. And then he called on someone else. That sucked. But I learned so much from the experience. One, I learned I could bear that kind of abject humiliation and survive it. And I learned about a strength that I had and I was okay. Because part of us thinks that we can't survive something like that. I also learned a lot about keeping my word and responsibility. And the most important thing I learned is not to fake it if I don't know something, just to, to cop to it. But I'll never forget that moment when he wrote a bunch of guys on the board. Oh my God. It's awful. So we can do that as long as you have the meta that that's a challenging learning environment that works really well. What won't work though is if you villainize me and blame me for humiliating you. Because I'm going to bring you to the edge of your understanding out of wanting to serve you. Authority projections come in and be like, oh man, I could have left that room and be like, oh my God, Mr. Lillian totally humiliated me when he wrote a bunch of guys on the board. Right? I could have said that. He, he should have known I hadn't done the reading at that point and just let me off the hook. Really? Right? Why? I earned that humiliation. I earned it. So it was fair. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not going to give you guys read. It won't be like that. That's, that's you know, obviously... I do know a lot about German history though, as a result of that class. <laughs> He was such a cool guy, you know. He, we, we, the tests were all true, false, and they were tricky on on purpose. And then after the test, or you know, by the time he'd hand out the papers back on, on uh, you know, the day or two after, and then he, we would have what he called a bitch session, where you could protest and advocate for like one of the questions was badly worded. He was such a lawyer that way, like you know, he would go one by one through all like whatever thirty five questions, like number three and he. Objections were four, and people were like four. This is poorly worded. You could interpret it. Blah 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 blah. And then he would argue, and people would argue, and other people would join in. And you go, "Okay, fine. Who got four? Okay, change, change it on your test." And then you'd hand it back in, and he would adjust the score. Such a cool guy. And so, in that way, it, it, it went both ways. There was a, he he took in feedback, and there was a mutual kind of respect. So, what you guys have to do. And if, if we go forward with this, and it sounds like we will, is the same thing I've said since the beginning. Bring a question. You okay with me calling on you? I'll accept volunteers, but if I've got to wait more than five seconds, I'll just start calling on people. In, in uh, You know that expression we have, pulling teeth? I don't want to pull teeth. Well, in German, I would say, I don't want to have to pull worms out of your nose. That's the expression. Isn't that funny? And we think of like, we look at him and go, that was horrible. Oh, is it any horrible than pulling teeth? <laughs> I think that stuff's so interesting. So am I going to have to pull worms out of your nose or are we going to really do this? You game to turn toward your weaknesses? A bunch of new people probably going to start in September. 
You guys want to be the leaders of them? You want to show them how it's done? Want to lead their groups? Feel what it's like to come up against other people's excuses? Pull worms out of their nose? You'll learn a ton. Another good German expression, we say break a leg here, um, you know, for people who are about to perform. In German, it's break your neck and back. <laughs> so interesting. All right, I will take your tacitness as a yes. And um, we'll do this for the next few webcasts. And uh, sometime in September, I'm going to start clear as a course. I haven't outlined it yet, but it's going to be fun. Critical thinking, problem solving, root cause analysis, that kind of stuff. Or, you know, if there's like a completely different course you want me to do, I'm open to that. But I think that'd be a good one to do. Uh, I, I really like the idea of the, uh, the critical thinking course. Um, it, it's something I've, I've always kind of felt like I lacked and I think, um, that would be, that'd be awesome. And I think to go back to your other question about sort of the, the, the round robin of, of leading the, uh, or, or at least just bringing the questions and being called on. Yeah. Uh, a lot of discomfort there, but, um, I think that's a, that's an area of growth for me specifically, but I, I know that it would be good for others as well, regardless of how painful it might be in the moment. So I'm, I'm in personally. <laughs> good. Yeah, and there's there's more that can be done here. You know, it's like if if you guys want uh, inquiries or assignments or ideas, uh, you know, um, from me about what you could be doing. Um, I, I've done this here and there, but you you might be surprised how little time it actually takes. You know, if 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 you bring a really concise issue that you've been struggling with, something you've been working on. Sometimes in just a, a couple of minutes, I can give you a next step that will help you break through. But you, you just have to do your side of it. And that's not like a earning thing. It's just the way it works. It's sort of like a, th there's just a mechanism somehow in me that when people ask really specific questions and they've done everything that they can and they've reached some kind of endpoint where they don't know what to do. There's like a squeeze that that creates that I don't know how to describe it. It's, um, it just precipitates stuff out of me. But if someone just says, so what could I be working on? It doesn't precipitate anything out of me. It doesn't, it doesn't make the mechanism work. So when, when you struggle with something, it just flicks a switch in me and I can be very quick with what, what comes out. I don't know how that works or why it's there or anything. Uh, I can't really take credit for it, but uh, it, it just when you do your work, I can help you a lot. If you kind of hang back and don't work that hard, then it just, it's like the gas isn't in the tank then, you know? And part of that work is the willingness to turn toward that discomfort. That does something. Times a pump of sorts. All right, you guys. Thanks for being here today. That was fun. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Be sure to visit clearandopen.com for the latest tools, articles, and free resources to help you on your journey. Thanks for listening, and bye for now.